Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Madison Square Garden Old Reliable for Friday Night Smackdown. We got a sellout house as we're on the way to WrestleMania. Only two more episodes of each show after this one to go. We're nearing that point. I'm so excited. TW 2020 is around the corner. Uh,. I'm recording this the day after WrestleMania, which honestly was not that bad. Uh, I thought night one was obviously slower. And almost like nearly all of the finishes on night one were fucked. Like just scuffed. Like I don't know what the hell that was. But uh, the, the, time lim the time being so like drastically shortened was great. Uh, uh, Seth Rollins, and, uh, I'm just gonna talk about just WrestleMania for a bit, just cause I can. SmackDown's always a shorter episode anyway. Uh, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens was great on night one. Uh, the Boneyard match was the Boneyard match. I'm not, like, I wasn't super into it, but it was still pretty, you know, it was pretty cool to see them try to go in that direction. Uh... Night 2, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte was fucking beautiful. A great way to open the show. And also a great women's match just in general. Just There there was really no like need for a story. Well, I mean, yes, there was. But it was a very simple, I want to beat the fuck out of you story. Which I just love that kind of shit. Uh, and on the side note, we also had, you know, the amazing Wyatt Cena. A funhouse main event, which was fantastic. Uh, main event was short, obviously, you figured that going in, Drew won the belt, all was good. I can't think of, like, matches, like, they were either all, like, great or fun, just, like, short and sweet, like, okay, that's fine. Except Otis and Dolph, I, I literally could not, like, if 64 put a gun up to my head and said he was gonna delete AAA from every copy of T.E.W., uh, the Seaverse database. I I still wouldn't give a fuck about Otis and uh, Otis and Dolph. It's just so I I just can't with the whole cock simping storyline. It's just so fucking dumb. But you know what's not dumb? This is how for episode of Friday Night SmackDown. And Zach Reddick comes out. And if you remember last week, Batista Batista bombs Shawn Michaels right off the fucking stage. And Zach Reddick says, "I've talked to Shane McMahon. He's currently with Shawn Michaels." And because of Batista, there is now no governing body in the WWE. Triple H's position is on the line. Raw has no general manager, essentially. And now SmackDown is left basically barren. He calls out Batista for, you know, saying that, you know, he's still doing the dynasty work, even though there's no dynasty like a fucking dipshit, even if Triple H is pretending it. He's essentially ruined the WWE's one place semblance of order, which is ironic considering what it was supposed to be. You know, the whole dynasty wanted to have Raw as the orderly show and SmackDown as the chaotic one. It's kind of changed hands now. Batista eventually comes out, calls Zack Ryder Vanilla Midget, like, you know, like that's the only thing he can say. And, and Zack Ryder goes, you know what, Batista? You had that match, you had that opportunity, and I beat you fair and square, but you know what? I can't let this slide. I'm adding you to our WrestleMania match. It's going to be a triple threat. And Sheamus is like, this is bullshit. I deserve a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for that title. He's like, you know, I want to win at WrestleMania. I deserve that one-on-one. -on -one. Zach's like, look, uh, well, first off, since I have the booking power, you're going to have to work together because you have a tag team match player, holla, holla, holla with perfect fortunes. I feel like a team building exercise. I feel you guys would want to team up against the smaller guy and Shame's like, yeah, that is kind of a good point. He goes, I do gotta admit though, Batista was talking some mad shit about you in the back, so I wouldn't count out that, you know, that one on one match stipulation. Seamus is like, Bro, you talking shit? You bald ass motherfucking Cuban And Batista's like, What the fuck you say to me, you Irish piece of shit? And Zack Ryder just is like, I have done my job, I'm out of here. And he leaves, of course. And that's the end of that se the opening segment. And we open up the show with a match in order to get into that big old tag team match as Miami Vice takes on... Miami Vices of Suzuki Gun take on perfect uh, Saviors of Perfection. 
a chance to beat Perfect Fortunes at WrestleMania. Miami Vices pick up the win. Uh, two uh, great competitors in Trent Beretta and Roderick Strong pick up a needed win. Now they're going to go to WrestleMania to see if they can pick up that, you know, pick up the tag team titles. And we have a match between Katie Lee and Melissa of the Coven, which Katie Lee lends 1609 with the Catatonic. Katie Lee, of course, going to be challenging for the Divas title at WrestleMania 30. Uh, and after that, Astrid basically lights go off, lights come back on. Astrid's in the ring. She's some, and Katie Lee just kind of scurries off. She is, you know, worried. She is confused. She, you know, we, we've kind of established Katie Lee has some magic of her own. Whatever Astrid is is completely out of her league and thus sends her scurrying away off of fear of the Divas champion. Uh, and uh, Astrid's really hidden in the park. I'm, I'm so excited to see how far she's come. And it's really cool to see how far you can get over, like when you play a long save, like somebody who just kind of showed up, and then you have the plans and you get them over. It's really fun. Uh, next we have a Money in the Bank qualifying match. As uh, Minoru Suzuki tries his best, but he's no match for the younger, more experienced as well. Alberto Del Rio taking the WWE style and submitting him with a rolling cross arm bar to go to Money in the Bank. So if you know Money in the Bank's field of participants, the full card for Raw is Randy Orton, John Morrison, Wade Barrett. And now for SmackDown is Alberto Del Rio, Sin Cara. In Drew McIntyre. One of those men will get the money in the bank briefcase and hopefully do a lot better than fucking Sheamus did with the money in the bank briefcase. And next up we have, as the hour we've advertised it heavily, Madison Square Garden erupts as the glass shatters and Stone Cold Steve Austin makes his way to the ring. He has the gear on, he has everything. And Austin says... He thanks everybody for the warm welcome. You know, give him a hell yeah and everything. But, you know, he says a lot of people have not been giving him the same kind of feeling in his personal life. A lot of his friends, his family, and veterans of the industry have completely disregarded what Stone Cold is about to do. And he goes, hopefully people are aware of this, but... He saw what Bray Wyatt was doing. He, he's attacking the old guard. He wants to make a name for himself. This is not a new thing, Stone Cold says. It's not a new concept. He's seen sons of bitches do it from back when he was a rookie. Hell, he did it with Jake the Snake. But the thing with Bray Wyatt is that Bray Wyatt is a very, very intimidating soul. He is a powerful being whether you want to admit it or not. Bray Wyatt doesn't even... He has a mind for the business that's completely made of, of something that we can't comprehend. Bray Wyatt is the kind of guy to not go for a championship, but to go for prey. He saw Goldust's vulnerability, and he took advantage of it. He saw Chris Jericho's vulnerability, and he took advantage of it. And now, at this point... He can do anything. The only reason he probably hasn't won a world title is because he doesn't feel like he needs to win it yet. He won the United States Championship basically on his debut because he could. And that's a scary thought. And Austin is going to be damned if he sees something that he loves so much. World Wrestling Entertainment be taken over by this this monstrosity that is Bray Wyatt. So Bray one, Wyatt wants to fight all gods. He's going to have to read a passage out of Austin 316. Because at WrestleMania, it's going to be Stone Cold versus Bray Wyatt. Even if everyone says he shouldn't. He's got the messed up neck. This will be the last match, even if he wins. There is no comeback story for Austin. Austin has to do what he needs to do. And in his eyes, he needs to protect the business. This isn't rookie versus veteran. It's every man versus monster. That's exactly... It's always... It's David versus Goliath. And just like that, a new page in Austin 316 will be opened 
when Bray Wyatt gets hit with the Stone Cold Stunner at WrestleMania 30. So it is official. Austin versus Wyatt at WrestleMania. Stone Cold coming out of retirement to defend the business. Give me a hell yeah. There is no hell yes. You cannot give me hell yeah. So we have a very shitty match <laughs> between... Uh, we have this match. We built it up. El Helio de Rey Mysterio and Hunico take on the Child Protection Agency who they beat when... Uh, well, El we Rey Mysterio. Correct me, I'm wrong. They, you know, have a shitty match because Titus O'Neil sucks. Everyone kind of just sucks here. But after that, we have the real Rey Mysterio running down. And, you know, they're basically Hunico and El Helio are about to basically stomp a mud hole in everyone's ass. And Rey comes down and uh, basically stops that from happening. Hunico probably eats a 619. Or, or yeah, 619. El Helio tries to fight back, but he's roughed up. And Ray grabs a microphone. And he's like, <clears throat> I don't know his shoot name. He probably would say his shoot name. It's his nephew, I believe. Uh, and he's like, What are you doing here? Like, what, what, what's your problem here? And Hunako's about to mic, but Helio's like, No, no, no. And he takes the mic. And he says, Ray, I'm with Hunako for one reason and one reason specifically only. That's, well, I, I fucking, sometimes I can cut a good promo and sometimes I, I eat shit. He says that back in the day, if these folks remember, in WCW, Rey Mysterio fought Kevin Nash. The stipulation being his mask was on the line. Now, he lost that match and he unmasked. And he did stay true to his word. But then, in 2002... Or was it 2000? Yeah, it was 2003. Or was it 2000? I, whenever he showed up to WWE, I, I can't forget. I had Wikipedia, but I'm a dumb fuck, and I should have done that. He came back to wrestling with the mask on. He disgraced the Mysterio name. He didn't ask Sid, his dad, his senior. I forget if it's... No, it's not his dad. He didn't ask for a Mysterio senior... He goes, he even spelled the changing of his name differently. He points out, as you can see here, the family wants nothing to do with him. Well, at least he, El Helio, wants nothing to do with Ray. He says it's a disgrace to Lucha Libre, and it's a disgrace to the entire world of professional wrestling, what Ray has done. And he's going to correct that wrong. He wants to fight Ray Mysterio at WrestleMania, the pre-show. Sorry, you know, again, this was, you know, we can't have so many matches in the main. I wish I could have all these matches in the main card. Please, promise. Like, look at my eyes. I, I, I want all these matches. TW20 will fix that. He says he wants a simple match in which if Ray wins, the real Ray, main Ray, Ray OG, El Helio will change his name. You shouldn't deserve the name El Helio. Ray Mysterio. But if Ray wins, he won't just change his name. He'll unmask. He'll take it off and he'll never be able to put it on again. And Ray thinks about it and he nods. And it's another match official for the pre show El Helio versus the scene. The son versus the main. The king versus king. El Helio to Rey Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio. And Hunico just is kind of there because I don't know even Hunico's gimmick is supposed to be. Is he supposed to be a cholo or is he, is that what that is? You know, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican so you don't obviously have those. But he kind of, it kind of sounds like, I mean we have like, we have an equivalent of a cholo. But like that's, it's not really like you can't like call it that. It's just very weird. Fuck it. Latinx confusions aside, we have our next segment. Basically, Samoa Joe goes up to Colt Cabana and it's like, Yo, Colt, you know what would be awesome? If I had an Intercontinental title shot. And Colt's like, well, I can't just give title shots. He's like, well, you did just give one to Jack Swagger. You could have said no. He's like, yeah, that's true. He's like, you know what? F Col Samoa Joe, you're my friend. I, I think you're awesome. You're a cool guy. You really are cool. Uh, I want to have that triple threat match with you. People are having triple threat matches, tag matches. Fuck it. We're going to have a match at Mania. 
you, me, and, and Swagger, because I promise Swagger, you'll get that WrestleMania paycheck. It'll be this will be your first WrestleMania. It'll be great. That's awesome. And then Jack Swagger rolls up, and Vicky's there, and Vicky's like, typical indie guys giving out opportunities to their friends. You just want to add another factor because you're scared of Jack Swagger that he'll tap you out. He'll put you in the ankle lock, or he'll hit you with that weird fucking move he did from the top rope. And Colt's like, Jack, why are you looking like that? Like, Jack Swagger's doing that, like, thing where he just stares off in space. He's like, you gotta take a shit? Are you gonna shit yourself? Go to the bathroom. You're shitting yourself. Swagger eventually gets mad, throws a punch at Colt Cabana, and then Colt Cabana goes down, he looks at Samoa Joe, and Samoa Joe's like, bro, you even try it, I will knock your ass out. So he goes up. And starts hitting on Colt, but then Small Joe's like, well, I didn't make, I did say we're friends. And he fucking locks in the Colquina clutch. People rush in to stop the brawl and, you know, save the kind of three men who will be at the pre-show for the Intercontinental Championship. I believe our main event is next. And in 95A, we have the tag team of Sheamus and Batista. Uh, basically, this match, they, they work pretty okay together. Of course, Perfect Fortunes out-wrestle them when it comes to the tag team stuff because they're just bona fide at this point in terms of the tag team scene. Uh, and then and then Sheamus just fucking bro kicks Batista right in the face and Dolph Ziggler eventually gets the pin for the win. And we have a 95 A-star match to end off SmackDown. Always good to see. Always good to see a good main event. I like I like. I like telling stories, but I like when I get the numbers, too. I should worry less about the numbers, but, you know, it's satisfying to see the little stars there. It's just fun. And we end the show, and John Cena just walks out, and everyone's like, oh, fuck. No Undertaker's there. He just, there's, he brings out, like, a, a chair, and he sits down in the chair, and he has a microphone, and he's like, oh, shit. And John Cena begins to speak, and he says... At No Way Out, not only did my quest to become the greatest of all time end, it was humiliated. The Undertaker basically pulled his pants down and shat all over the legacy that I've created these past 11 months. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. A lot of people could have done that before, but they were scared, rightfully so. Now, we all know about The Undertaker, and I realized something. Before, I was going to pound Zack Ryder into a fucking glob of goo, win back my title, and then challenge The Undertaker. But I realized that I had wasted 11 months of my life. While I was beating up The Rock, Sting, and all these old motherfuckers trying to get to the top of Mount Rushmore, I realized there was only one thing I needed to do to cement my legacy. I'm a 14-time champion. And there's nothing else I need to do except one thing beat The Undertaker at Wrestlemania. The streak is a legacy. The streak is the greatest of all time. So when I take that from The Undertaker's dying breaths, I will be cemented as the ultimate pro wrestling god. The ultimate ace. No one will be better than me. 50 years from now, on the internet, men will be comparing the various talents of Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, me, and anybody in from yester and after years. But there will be one thing that sets apart all of us. Is that I broke the streak. And he puts the mic down and he walks away as we end the show. 94A. And... See, when I say I could do promos and I do that one, that's what I kind of mean. I really, I, I didn't even, I, I wrote the basic notes for that one, but a little rambly, but I still liked it. John Cena wants to break the fucking streak. He wants to murder it uh, and all things holy in life. 
and he has a good shot of doing that. So I, I would watch out for that. So I will see you guys on the next episode of Monday Night Raw. We're getting close to WrestleMania, and I am excited.